Okay, are we, are we running? Hi everybody, I'm Graham Clark. I'm a metallurgist at Clark Knives in Wiltshire. We're here today to talk about making Damascus, something I do a lot of, and I'd like to share some of my ideas on uh, how we can make better Damascus. So the next bit I want to talk about is setting your forge up to give yourself the right conditions and the right atmosphere inside there for the part of the process that you are doing. Now we spoke earlier about neutral, gas-rich, air-rich, atmospheres in there and for this first stage you really do need a really good gas rich furnace you don't want any oxygen in there at all you don't want any scale building up on the outside so when you when you pull your piece of metal out and it's red hot you don't want any scale on the outside that means if you're not putting scale on the outside boy you're not going to get any in between those layers which you've now pressed together to try and stop air getting in there anyway be warned it takes a long time to get hot because you are running the furnace gas rich. You're not burning all the gas. Now, what do I mean by gas rich? Well, a lot of people call setting your forge up to have dragon's breath, i.e. you've got yellow flames coming out the end of your forge. When those flames go yellow, they're actually atoms of carbon which haven't burnt and they are now burning in the free air as it spews out the end of your forge. So if you've got yellow tip flames coming out the end of your forge, that's free carbon. That means that, that carbon cannot find any oxygen inside the hot zone of your furnace. There's none left in there. So you, you know you've got a gas-rich uh, gas atmosphere. But your billets are going to take a long time to get hot relative to if you're running air rich. You know, the, the furnace is roaring its head off like a lion and uh, getting hot nice and quickly and getting very hot. With the same amount of gas shut down the air, you are not gonna generate the amount of heat. On my particular forge, when I'm setting up to do the setting and the, uh, the original set down before I do the full forge weld, that set down, I will double my gas pressure going into the forge. So I've got double the amount of gas going in. I still have to shut the air down to nothing and it can take quite a long time for that stack to get hot. Watch it, keep an eye on it. When you see it starting to glow dull red, now whether you're using a hydraulic press or a hammer or even a hand hammer, when it gets to a dullish red, so that's seven, 800 degrees, a dullish to a medium red, take it out and give it a press or a whack. That's gonna further set those faces closer to each other. By the time it starts going red, it's beginning to soften. It's not hard steel like it was when it was cold, when you were wanging up the, uh, the layers in a vise to weld them together. It was stiff, very stiff. This starts to press it down a bit. So just a light tap or a light press in the, in the forge. The other thing to bear in mind is if you're using a forge, remember those die faces on the forge pressing onto the uh, like outside plates of steel. If your die pl dies are cold, they are gonna cool that metal down. They can cause, you know, once it starts going red, you're getting up towards the hardening temperature. You don't wanna start hardening that sheet of steel on the outside, so preheat your dies. Again, I use a, a big roofer's torch, propane driven roofer's torch. I've got an infrared pyrometer and I make sure my dies are up to about three, 400 degrees centigrade before I start doing this first set down press. That set down press is quick. You just in the press, boop, boop, up and it squashes everything together a little bit better. Back in the forge and let it start getting hotter again. When you do that press, if you see any oxide coming off the outside of that stack, you haven't got the right atmosphere in your forge. Shut down your air a bit more, turn the gas pressure up a bit more, whatever. But make sure you've got gas rich, you've got nice dragon's breath coming out at each end of your forge. Now wait until it starts to get really hot and you really want it to be going up now to red and into the orange. Again, you're using a lot of gas, don't leave it there forever, but look at your stack. If it looks nice and orange out the outside and slightly dull red in the middle, it ain't hot enough. Believe me, it takes time for that heat to travel through a big stack. Leave it in there for another few minutes, another five minutes, another 10 minutes if you have to, until it's an even color. Make sure your forge was nice and hot before you start heating it up. I preheat my forges for 10, 15 minutes, then I will start heating up. Get it in there, make sure it's nice and hot. Now, again, give it another press. You're not trying to deform the metal too much. You're trying to press it together so that the faces of each of those layers are now touching each other. This time you can press it for a little bit longer, five, 10 seconds perhaps, 
uh, five seconds is probably better. Just press them together, make sure they're touching. Now you know that all those faces are sealed up. They've all moved. You'll probably see the height of the stack reduce a little bit now, now that you're up at hopefully a thousand degrees or more. You'll see the layers, the height of the stack reduce. That's really getting everything pressing together. Nothing's gonna get in between those layers now. So now you can change the atmosphere in your forge. Now you can open up the air and if necessary, reduce the gas pressure. On my particular forge, you know, I do that setting and I know I've got two bar gas pressure coming in. If I open up the air vents on the, on the Venturi burners fully, I'm actually going to, I won't melt the steel, but I will start damaging the refractory. I'm getting up to over 1200 degrees and that's a bit too much. Your ideal forge welding temperature on steel products is around about 1200 degrees. 1150, 1200 is an ideal temperature. I've seen on some American sites, they say they like to go up to about 1220 or that uh, old fashioned, uh, I think it's 2300 Fahrenheit or something they go to. But I, I'm afraid I can't remember what Fahrenheit really is now at those temperatures anymore. I'm fully converted to centigrade. But 1200, 1220, you know, remember steel starts melting in the low 1300s. You don't really want to be getting up there. So again, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on your temperature. But you, what you're looking for now is a nice bright yellow. And this time you do your final, you do your first forge weld. So out of the press, tap it lightly with a hammer. Not too crazy. Preheated dies if you're using a hydraulic press. Press it down a bit and it's going to weld together. Then back into your forge again. This time, heat it up. You know all those faces are welding together now. They're getting nice and strong. Back in there, get it up to that bright yellow temperature. If you can measure, if you've got a facility to measure temperature, make sure you're around about 1150, 1200, and leave it in there for five minutes once it is hot. That is allowing those crystals to grow across the boundaries. That's what you're looking to do. That is what forge welding is. It's not all done under the press. A lot of the welding process is done inside that forge if everything is set right. Let those crystals grow. Now this time you can come out and you can now start forging out to shape. So one, a couple of more transverse presses and then you can start pressing sideways. They, they won't delaminate or pop apart. If they do, you haven't been listening to me properly up to now. Okay, that's about it really because now they've got it forged welded together. Now it's just one block of steel, they can just carry on welding. Thank you to all our sponsors who made this video possible for you. Clock Knives who offer professional heat treatment and Damascus billets for knife makers. And Multitool Products Europe who sell the 84 engineering belt grinders and even heat kilns specifically for knife makers. Links are in the description, go and check them out. Massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the content that we do, and if you find value in the content we create, you can support our channel at patreon.com slash UK Blade Show, or links are in the description below. Let me know if there's other topics that you feel will be worth discussing relating to knife making. See you in the next video.